Hi, my name is Tim Carter. I pastor at Landmark Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas. And this is our apologetic and outreach ministry known as IamCornate.org. This is our YouTube feature, just as one of the features of our outreach you know, platform, that is. And uh, the Genesis account of creation and the gospel. Uh, more questions have been generated over the last, I guess, few years than uh, typical, especially in our area, which is great. I love it. But I'd just like to go ahead and say something that might, uh, some people say, well, that's radical. Well, let it be radical. Uh, Genesis 1-1 is the gospel can stand alone. Uh, in Paleo-Hebrew, you can go back and look at the symbols that were used from which the biblical Hebrew alphabet and uh, language was derived, and there's great work that shows that a knowledge of the gospel was in that one verse alone. But I would like to show and demonstrate it from the account of John 1 1 and what's the relationship of Genesis 1 1. And let's just look at that very quickly for just a moment. And let's start over here with the Hebrew side. There, Ray, and this is that word sheath. The array sheath. This is in beginning, and I'll try to make this more easily read because here's the word in, and here's beginning. There we go. There we go. In beginning, and then we have uh, he created. We have bara, that very popular term in creation. Bara, he created. So he created. And we have Elohim. That's quite a long word there. Let me fix that. Have Elohim. There we go. There. Now, this just remember these vowel pointings. Uh, you probably will never have a teacher that requires that anywhere else in life, but in your Hebrew class, that's important. So, uh, this is God, but you notice uh, this is a plural ending here. So, now we have understanding where if you notice Father, Son, Holy Spirit, as someone asked me where's verses about the Trinity, I said any verse that says God for to say or think God of the Bible without thinking Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is to not think God of the Bible. So here we have in beginning He, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit created and we have this uh, symbol here of direct object when the object is definite and this is this word hash got to have a some kind of hasha I'll just spell it mayin there the heavens plural and it's translated singular very valid for that to be that's all of space all of space and then we have this word and and then this little sign here of eighth when the object is definite again here's a definite article ha Aritz, and there's the word, the earth. So there's matter, here's the earth, so the heaven and the earth. There, now what's the relationship of this and, and John 1.1? 1, 1? Well, remarkably, uh, the relationship, it's exciting. Yes, I said that word. Uh, in beginning, in RK, where we get our word archaeology, RK, Ain was Ho Logos. Just two weeks in Greek class, and you'll memorize this verse. And people think you really know a lot of Greek. Well, actually, how do you do know? You do know. You memorize this verse. Here, someone accused me years and years and years ago. They said, You just memorized that. I said, Well, I forget things I memorize. He said, What do you mean? I said, Well, I couldn't forget the languages taught to me in the Missionary Baptist Seminary if I tried. <laughs> Matter of fact, I've fallen and injured myself before, and the first thing that occurred to me when I regained my consciousness was my knowledge of Biblical Hebrew and Koine Greek. It was hilarious. The injury couldn't even affect my knowledge of it. So in beginning was the Word, and, and the Word, the Word, pain again, was being toward the God, And again, then it's Theos appears first this time, and then there's Ain, and then the Logos. So 
this lined up very well, and it's more than a, uh, the world's version of coincidence is just a joke, and the Bible's doctrine of coincidence uh, is that it involves God's sovereignty and control. So I enjoy that. So here we have, uh, let's look at some key words. Here's in beginning, this phrase is the same as this one. So John's going all the way back here. Uh, what we have is a 2,000 year old language referring back to a 3,500 year old somewhere like that. Here's in beginning here's beginning and he says was 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 he has logos, the logos, the logos the logos very fascinating here because this word was is in perfect tense meaning past, ongoing uh, continuous action so the word was always being in beginning the word and the word was always being toward the God in beginning and the word the logos was always being God so the eternality of Jesus the word the eternal relationship of Jesus and Father and Holy Spirit the Trinity is demonstrated and attested here and then the eternality of him being God he's fully God that is Jesus the word is fully God uh, he's co-equal, co-eternal with Father, with Holy Spirit. Uh, each one uh, fully God, each one co-eternal. No subordinationism, no modalism. Uh, one God, three persons. Here in Genesis 1, 1, in beginning, this one we know, this God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, He created the heavens, the heaven singular, and the earth. This is uh, space, this is matter. Without space it matters no time. So in no time, and there is no time, necessary because especially when we talk about instant spoken creation now you're preaching the gospel when you ridicule because you believe in six 24-hour day periods that is periods that equal a 12-hour day sunlight and a 12-hour night and people ridicule you for that welcome to preaching the gospel <laughs> preach instant and spoken creation of Genesis 1 1 and show who was always being there and then <laughs> Now you're now you're preaching. So you can preach the gospel from Genesis 1-1 with just the knowledge of John 1-1 and go out and preach the gospel to all the world. So it's exciting. It's energizing. If you're lacking energy in your ministry, you say, well, I just need a little bit of energy. Well, don't study so many broad, complex, abstract things. Just dig down into the Bible you have and recognize the implication of this. If Jesus was always being in the beginning and the Jesus, the Word, was always being toward the God, so in eternal relationship with Father and Holy Spirit, and He was always being God, so co-eternal, fully God, and Holy Spirit is fully God, the Father is fully God, then you're preaching the gospel now. So Genesis 1-1 is the gospel, stands alone, and can be preached anywhere in the world, uh, so go out and preach this gospel. Have a blessed day.